Hey everyone, I'm Courtney Alcock with the Center for Innovation in Teaching and Learning at Memorial University. Joining me today is Dr. Tiffany Lee with the School of Pharmacy, and we are going to be talking about the new PharmD program for working professionals. Welcome, Dr. Lee. Thank you. First, we're going to take a few minutes to talk about the program and look at some common questions. Then we'll invite questions from viewers. If you have friends or family that may be interested in the PharmD program, feel free to tag them in the comments or hit the share button. So Dr. Lee, tell us first about your role in the School of Pharmacy and in the new PharmD program. Sure. So I am a faculty member at the School of Pharmacy and I've been with the School of Pharmacy actually since uh, 2009. And more recently I took on the role as the program development lead for the um, PharmD for Working Professionals program. So I work with a great team at the School of Pharmacy and also some experts in fact, from the pharmacy community here in Newfoundland and beyond. And also, I'm, I have been working with uh, the Center for Innovation in Teaching and Learning, or CITL. We have a great uh, instructional design group that we're working with to develop the PharmD for Working Professionals program. Great. And so can you give us an overview of the new program and why it's being introduced? Sure thing. So the PharmD has become the new standard for pharmacy education in Canada. And so Currently, our undergrad program for entry to practice uh, students is the PharmD program. So we wanted to be able to offer pharmacists who are practicing in the community the opportunity to really expand their knowledge and skills and to obtain the PharmD. So this program um, has four main components. So there's online learning, which of course we're working with CITL to facilitate that. There's two clinical skills uh, courses that are offered on campus and we also have an applied learning model so we have three applied learning courses in fact and as well there is um, two uh, clinical rotations that our students will complete. Great and so if somebody is interested in doing a PharmD program for working professionals why would they choose this one? Well of course we want everyone to pick the program at Memorial but there's a couple of I guess key points that I'd like to make about the program here at Memorial. So when this program was designed, it was designed after much consultation with the pharmacy community and pharmacy educators. So we like to say it was designed with, you know, the practicing pharmacist in mind. So we really did a lot of extensive consultation to find out what pharmacists wanted from a working professional program. Our tuition is very competitive with other programs across Canada. The program is mostly delivered online. And as I've mentioned, you know, we are partnering with CITL to deliver this program. And CITL are really leaders in online uh, education. As well, you know, we have, uh, we offer, I guess, a lot of flexibility in this program. So you only have to come to campus for two uh, clinical skills courses most of your program can be completed online. Great, so quite uh, flexible yeah. in, uh, in, in that aspect of it. And how does accreditation for PharmD programs work? That's a good question. So with the change, I guess, in the standard for pharmacy education, so too has the accreditation process. So for our entry to practice students, they are actually going to be completing an accredited program. However, for practicing pharmacists, the group that accredits pharmacy programs across Canada, which is the Canadian Council for Accreditation of Pharmacy Programs, or CCAP, have indicated that these post-professional PharmD degrees will not be accredited going forward. So although you're not completing an accredited PharmD program, keep in mind that you are already a practicing pharmacist, right? So you, you've met the requirements for licensure in Canada, and as well, the degree that you obtain through completing the PharmD for Working Professionals program is exactly the same as the degree that will be awarded to our entry to practice pharmacists. So when you graduate from this program, you will have graduated from Memorial University with a Doctor of Pharmacy degree. Great, lots of information there. And for those interested in the program, who can apply? So our program is actually open to uh, all pharmacists licensed to practice in Canada. Um, we do give priority to Newfoundland and Labrador pharmacists, as well as to our own alumni.
However, in saying that, as I mentioned, it is open to all pharmacists practicing in Canada, and we do have, you know, a number of designated seats for pharmacists who are practicing outside the province. Okay, and what is the process for applying to the PharmD program? Is it the same as, as every other program? Can you explain that a bit? Yeah, so Memorial has gone with an online application process. So what we would strongly recommend is that if you are looking for the application, that you go to our website. So on our website, and you can get there by just, um, it's just mon.ca, forward slash pharmacy and so if you go to our website you'll find that there's two links available there one for grads um, from memorials program and an additional link for those who have not completed programs to date at memorial so our application process as I mentioned is an online application and uh, you will have to supply a personal statement of I guess your interest in completing a PharmD program and how uh, this will help to achieve your professional career goals. As well, you'll have to complete an online um, resume type of form. You'll have to submit your transcripts from any um, universities that you have attended. And keep in mind that these transcripts must be sent directly from those institutions to Memorial. As well, you'll need to obtain uh, one professional reference and that letter as well must be submitted directly from your referee. Okay, and while the largely, you, you did mention much of the program is online, uh, so while the mode of the program is largely online and fairly flexible, uh, students do need to spend some time here on the St. John's campus. Mm -hmm. Can you go into that a little bit more about what's involved there? Sure, so we have two clinical skills courses and those courses are really focused on um, achieving or teaching those skills that are best facilitated through face-to-face -face learning. So those courses are offered, one, the first one is actually offered at the very beginning of the program. So students who are admitted for fall 2018 will actually complete that course um, from August 31st to September 2nd of 2018. Mm -hmm. And then the second clinical skills course will happen immediately before your um, advanced pharmacy practice experiences. So that one will is scheduled to take place in the spring semester following completion of those uh, particular rotations. So that's the only two times that you have to come to campus. And those particular courses, as I mentioned previously, they're just three day courses. So you'll come to campus for three days at the beginning of the program, and again for another three days near the end of the program. Otherwise, everything is delivered online. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit more about what's involved in the on-campus three-day clinical skills courses? Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, those courses really focus on developing your knowledge and skills in areas that's best facilitated face-to-face. -face. So some examples that I would provide around this would be things like physical assessment. So that's really difficult to teach in an online kind of uh, environment, and it's best if you know, we practice those skills and get immediate feedback on how we're doing with that. Some other things might be motivational interviewing, for example, or advancing our interviewing skills. So that would be two examples of, of activities that would be completed during those on-campus face-to-face courses. Great. We're actually going to move on to uh, some questions from our viewers. Uh, so post your question in the comments and Dr. Lee and I will do our best to get through as many as we can. Uh, if your question is not answered on air, we'll also be writing answers to questions in the comments over the next little while as well. So uh, we have a question from Maggie. Maggie asks, if the bridging program is not accredited, is this a disadvantage if a teaching position came up, say, at Munn uh, School of Pharmacy? Would graduates of the accredited new program or graduates of the PharmD programs offered in the states have an, have an advantage? No. And I think it's important to keep in mind that although pharmacy, or sorry, the working professional programs in Canada will not be accredited going forward, it's still a degree, right? So you're still obtaining the Doctor of Pharmacy degree and credential. So this will not limit at all, actually, will not limit um, your suitability for, you know, for jobs that came up at the School of Pharmacy. And in fact, you know, it's going to do so many wonderful things for you. You're going to expand your knowledge and skills, 
And, you know, in the end, you will graduate with the exact same credential as the students in our entry to practice program. So I don't think, Maggie, that it would uh, limit that at all. Okay, we'll move on to a question from Stephanie. Stephanie asks, how accessible is this for full-time employees? Thanks, Stephanie. So this program was designed specifically with the working pharmacist in mind. So keep in mind that, you know, that's our goal, is for pharmacists to really advance their practice to be able to work full-time. So given that the courses are offered mainly through online learning, you can complete the coursework at your own pace throughout the course of the week. Mo the majority of our courses are offered in what we call an asynchronous fashion. So they don't require that, for example, you have to come together with other um, students in the class to work on projects or papers. Now there will be some of those activities, but the majority of the coursework is asynchronous. And if you look at, I guess, the different streams that are available, so I should mention that we do have a three-year completion option as well as a four-year completion option. The course load is, I feel, quite manageable. I mean, speaking from my own experience as a pharmacist who worked full-time and completed a non-traditional PharmD program, yes, I was busy, of course, because you have an extra responsibility, but it's totally doable. So. I have, you know, every faith that practicing pharmacists would be able to complete this program while maintaining uh, their practice full time. Okay, and what does an applied learning model mean? Can you go into that a little bit more? Sure. So this is, I guess, one of the unique features of our program is this applied learning model. So essentially what this means is when you complete your coursework, you will then apply your, what you have learned directly at your practice site. Mm -hmm. So I can give you an example. One of the courses, or I guess the very first uh, applied learning course, one of the activities that you will engage in is taking work that you have um, accomplished in the previous course and applying it directly to your workplace. So you're going to develop, for example, a change implementation project, it's called. So this project could be something as simple as um, formulating, you know, a counseling service for patients with COPD. That's a good example. So you will actually implement that change implementation project as you uh, complete the course. And that will be your course work. So you will submit, um, you know, progress reports on how that project is coming along. You will submit, you know, self-reflection activities on how you feel the project is working for you and your store and your patients and then near the end you will do an evaluation of the of the, the project so the applied learning model was designed such that you can directly apply and re receive credit for applying your knowledge and skills in the workplace and so our goal here is really to uh, promote the advancement of pharmacists practice directly in their workplace. We want you to engage in activities that are going to have a direct impact on the care of your patients. And so by doing this, it cuts back, I guess, on the need for us to have so many um, clinical rotations. So I noted at the beginning that we have, um, we require that students complete two clinical rotations at the end of the program. So these, this applied learning model or the applied learning courses, because you're gaining that valuable experience in the workplace directly with the patients that you care for, it uh, limits the number of clinical rotations that you will in fact have to do. It seems like a really great experiential learning mm -hmm. opportunity. Um, are there any requirements for the applied learning courses? So the only requirement is that you are able to apply the content that you're learning directly in the workplace in a patient care setting. So for someone who perhaps um, doesn't work directly with patients, you will be expected to find a means to apply what you've learned to patients. So a good example would even be myself as an academic. Uh, right now, yes, I do have a clinical practice, but let's say prior to that time, if I was to complete a PharmD program such as this, I would have to um, engage with someone in the community or, you know, perhaps a, a physician's office and find the means to actually complete, complete my coursework to have that impact on patient care. Very good. 
Uh, we, we have a, a question or a comment from Deanne uh, who is asking us to confirm that if you are a MUN grad, you do not have to send in your transcript that is, and that that is accessed by the registrar. Yes, that's exactly correct. Okay, um, let's move on to another question here. Do students in the PharmD program need to complete the two clinical rotations in Newfoundland and Labrador or can they do them elsewhere? So we do not require that students complete their rotations uh, here in Newfoundland and Labrador. So again, to promote flexibility and to allow pharmacists the opportunity to complete rotations elsewhere and gain that valuable experience. The only thing I will say is that any rotation that students wish to complete has to be an approved rotation. So you'll have to work with um, you'll have to work with someone at the School of Pharmacy to kind of get that rotation approved and ensure that the preceptor is approved. But no, you can do your rotations anywhere in, you know, that you, that is, uh, that's up to you where you want to do those. We will just work with you to make sure that that's an approved rotation. And can they be done on a part-time basis, the rotations? No, so our rotations are intended to be full-time rotations. And so that's what was approved at all levels of the university. However, in saying that, you know, if there are special circumstances, students can certainly submit a request to the Dean of Undergrad Studies or the Associate Dean of Undergrad Studies um, to request an exemption from that. However, you know, we can't guarantee that those requests will be approved. Right. Okay, we have a question from Shahadat uh, who asks, after the Bachelor of Pharmacy, can I take the PharmD? Yes, uh, as long as you're licensed to practice in Canada and you've fulfilled all those requirements that allow you to practice in Canada. Okay, um, let's move on to the next question here. <clears throat> what skills will students learn by doing the PharmD program that they didn't learn in the bachelor program? That may actually go back to the last question. What are the differences there? Mm -hmm. So that's a really good question, and I guess one that, you know, pharmacists are really thinking a lot about for sure. And I know, you know, I thought a lot about that when I was thinking about pursuing a PharmD. So pharmacy practice has really evolved over the last 10 years. And with that, you know, education has evolved as well to ensure that we meet the demand for the field. And so what you'll find is with the PharmD program, there is an emphasis on gaining leadership skills that enhance patient care. So there's a large focus on, for example, um, engaging patients in their own health care. So that whole motivational interviewing concept becomes uh, very prevalent. We want to make sure patients are empowered to look after themselves. So this is kind of the new trend, I guess, in pharmacy practice. With the PharmD program, there will be an emphasis on evidence-based decision making. So that, you know, when I did my undergraduate program here at Memorial, I did the Bachelor of Science three-year program at the time. It was a two-year uh, pre-pharmacy and three years in pharmacy school. That program is very different from our current entry to practice program. So what we did, in fact, was look at any gaps between the entry to practice program and the BSc program and identify areas where we could uh, add that content to the PharmD program to ensure that the working professional program achieves all those um, competencies as well. Great. You mentioned before that there's a couple of different options for the program, a three-year option and a four-year option. Um, can you sort of describe the differences of those programs in terms of how they're laid out? Sure. So there's not a lot of uh, difference, in fact. Students will complete all of the same courses, so none of the coursework is, is any different. I guess the only exception is that in the four-year option, um, in year one in the spring semester, students will not have to complete a course, and then any of the remaining courses will be spread over that additional year. So you will do all the same courses, it's just that your course load may be a little lighter mm -hmm. for, for years three and four, for example, or sorry, years two and three. Okay. And is challenge for credit or prior learning assessment and recognition available for the Working Professionals Program? No, we don't offer um, credit for professional development or experience. So uh, students will not be able to request challenge for their clinical rotations or, uh, for example, any of the other courses that are offered within the program. 
Okay, that's good to know. And in terms of the admissions process, is an interview required as, as part of that? No, nope, not at all. So when you complete your online application, that's it. When, as soon as you hit submit, the application is complete. And then, uh, you know, we have an admissions committee that will review the applications and make a decision for admission. So you'll be notified uh, shortly, you know, thereafter once the deadline, you know, is uh, set for that. So no, there's no interview. You will not have to come to campus for that. Okay. And tuition, let's talk a little bit about sure. th that. Uh, can you sort of go into the tuition of this program? So the tuition for this program is $485 per credit hour. So there's 15 courses in this program, which equates to about 55 credit hours. So if you do the math there, the total cost for the program is approximately $27,000. Okay? So on top of the, the tuition cost, there are some other miscellaneous fees. So anyone who has a question about that, I would strongly encourage you to go to our website and take a look at the information that's posted there. But the approximate cost is around $27,000. Okay, and if anybody has any specific questions around tuition, feel free to put it in the comments here as well, and somebody may uh, get back to you in writing uh, on that. Um, we talked about there being two mm -hmm. PharmD programs. So we have the PharmD for working professionals, the PharmD for entry to practice. Is there a difference in tuition with those two programs? Yes, so the PharmD for working professionals uh, was designed based on a cost recovery model. And so because of that, we have a program fee, which is very, you know, it is different from the tuition model that's available to uh, undergraduate students in the entry to practice program. Okay. We have a question from Jeffrey who asks, is there a limit on admissions per year? That's a great question, Jeffrey. <laughs> we uh, are hoping to admit 40 students. And I mean, if we have more applicants than that, we will certainly look at that. But right now, um, we are going to admit 40 students per year. Okay. And we have a question from Josh who asks, how many seats are held for the working professional farm D uh, for the three and the four year options? So we actually, um, there's no specific requirements around that. Uh, we don't have a select number of seats. When students are admitted to the program, they will be asked to specify which option they would like to complete. So in fact, there is no, you know, there is no limit on the number of students who can, you know, partake in the three-year program versus the four-year program. Okay. Katrina uh, mentions that at her current practice, there's a clinical factor. Uh, would she be able to complete one of her clinical rotations at her current practice? No. So our intent is that with the clinical rotations is that you um, gain experience outside of your practice site. So while those applied learning courses, the intent is that you know you take your con your knowledge and you apply it directly to your practice. With the two clinical rotations, it is a requirement that the students complete those at an alternate site or within an alternate field. So for example, if you're an oncology pharmacist uh, working here within Eastern Health, we would uh, like for you to pursue a clinical rotation in a different field. Perhaps it might be in infectious disease, for example, or um, in ICU. So it's, it's such that you can gain other valuable experiences and really expand your knowledge and skills. And do students have to come to Newfoundland for an assessment? No. Nope. Oh. So as I mentioned, the mm -hmm. only time students have to come to campus is for those um, two clinical skills courses. So in terms of assessments, assessments are going to be facilitated in a number of different ways. Um, so if I think about exams, for example, exams for students in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador will be face-to-face -face, but at designated locations throughout the province. So, you, so CITL actually has designated exam sites throughout the province of Newfoundland and Labrador for exams. For students who are living in other provinces, CITL has the ability to offer those students a proctored um, online exam. Any other assessments, so for example, um, it could be assignments offered in a course or something like that, that will be facilitated through Brightspace which is the online platform that we are using um, that CITL uses here on campus as well. 
Okay, Frank asks, uh, can we start any courses earlier? He's, he's anxious to get busy. What is the deadline for the FarmD entry this year? So, the semester will start in September. However, in saying that, the very first clinical skills course um, will take place August 31st to September 2nd. So that will be the very first course that you will complete. Otherwise, you will complete the courses at their scheduled times. So you can find a little bit more information about that um, on our website. We actually have the three and four year options uh, laid out so that you can see when the courses will be offered and when you can complete those. Okay. Katrina says thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Katrina, for your question. Uh, Caroline, Carolyn, Caroline asks, is admission accepted only by people who have a uh, DSC, a BSC, Bachelor of Science Pharmacy from Canada? How does it work for international pharmacists? That's a good question. Right. So for international pharmacists, if you have completed uh, both, for example, a PEBC exams and you are licensed to practice in Canada, then you are eligible uh, for admission. Okay, we have a, another question from Jeffrey who asks, can the six-week rotations be broken up? Uh, currently, I get four weeks vacation per year. That's mm -hmm. a good point too, hey, working around vacations and annual yeah. leave. Yeah, that is a really good question, Jeffrey. Right now, as mm -hmm. I mentioned, uh, the, those two, I guess, uh, clinical rotations are considered full-time courses. And it's intended that you complete those particular rotations, you know, for the full six weeks, full time. However, you know, you can submit a request to, um, to our uh, Associate Dean of Undergrad Studies, should that be a concern for you, and then your request will be considered, you know. Great. Unfortunately, I can't really guarantee right now that it would be approved, but certainly, you know, we try to work with students where we can. Great. And how are exams completed? You, you did mention a little bit about the online mm -hmm. proctoring option, about uh, the established sites. Can you uh, speak a little bit more to that? Yeah, so there's, there's essentially um, two options for completing exams, or I guess one option depending on where you live. So for pharmacists who are living in Newfoundland Labrador, exams will be completed at a designated site um, that Memorial has for proctoring. So that information will be available to students prior to the exam schedule being released, I assume. I, that's all facilitated mainly through CITL. And I know yes. they have so much experience. You know, they have so much experience with um, organizing exams available to students who are completing online courses. And as, as I did mention, for students who are practicing, or sorry, for pharmacists who live outside the province, there is um, that availability for students to complete their exams through an online proctor. Okay. And we have a thank you from Caroline. Uh, thanks to you as well. Uh, that's actually all the time that we have for today. If you are interested in Memorial's PharmD program for working professionals, the application deadline for the first offering is coming up on March 1st. For more information about any of the programs offered by the School of Pharmacy, you can visit their website at mon.ca slash pharmacy, or if you have further questions about the PharmD program that we didn't answer today, you can contact the School of Pharmacy by email at pharminfo at mon.ca. Both the URL and email address will be posted in the comments, and don't forget to like the School of Pharmacy Facebook page and follow them on Twitter to stay up to date on their news and information. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for chatting with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It was great, and uh, thank you to everyone for watching.